Hello, yes, Building a Grassroots British Nationalist Movement, Part 2. I make a Part 2 because of the interest I've received from uh, Part 1, the video I made yesterday, Building a Grassroots British Nationalist Movement. I've had a lot of emails, a lot of interest. People are asking me questions, well, will it have a branch? Uh, will it have other branches around the country? Uh, will there be a membership? Uh, who can stand as a candidate, what will you be standing under, what banner and can people financially support it and so on and so on. So I'd like to answer some of those questions. Hopefully there'll be a branch in every town and city. And yes, hopefully there'll, there'll be a membership and most certainly uh, people can support it financially. Uh, candidates wise, for now you'll still be standing as an independent but you'll have the full support of a movement for a better Liverpool, like I said yesterday in the video. It's not going to be called that, but I'll use that as an example so you can understand and see where I'm coming from. Uh, you'll have the full support of movement for a better Liverpool. Now, movement for a better Liverpool, trust me, within a very short period of time, will be synonymous around Liverpool with a movement that opposes mass third world immigration into our beloved Liverpool. You see, this isn't race hate against anyone, right? especially ethnic minorities that have been born and bred in this city and go back generations. I've got no, no problem with those people. What we've got to do is stop the third world coming here now that don't have nothing in common with us. Don't forget, Liverpool has taken, you know, hundreds of years to uh, create this unique scousness. You can't just move the third world in and expect them to you know adopt our ways our customs our culture it's not going to happen and a classic example of this to prove my point is the top of smith down road where the romany gypsies gypsies have been dumped and also even more so kensington kensington now is on the brink of total balkanization they have dumped that many different ethnic and cultural groups there that don't even know each other let alone get along with each other it's now it's destroying that unique um, Kensington community and its scouseness. It's going, and people that live there will know that's the, that's the case, that's the truth. That's what's happening. So, movement for a better Liverpool, like I say, it won't be called that, just as an example to make my point. That will be synonymous soon with what I'm pushing, I, I, as well as many other issues that will be contesting and, and fighting on behalf of, right? Uh, so... I've had a lot of interest, so I know I'm on the right path here with this, and I'm looking forward to it. You know, I think that's what we need now because a lot of people, they're lost, and, you know, British nationalism has been hijacked by our opponents, and they're just leading our people, or scaring the living daylights out of them, more likely, or leading them down a dead end path of violence and confrontation. That's scaring the decent people away. Tommy Robinson Road, Joe Britain Face, National Action, all of them all being created by the security services. And it's two criminal proxies, Hope Not Hate, Nick Lowell's Jerry Gable's Circular Magazine. So this will give people a voice again, something to belong to for now, for now. Okay, I hope that answered some of your questions. Okay, thank you. Our activity must be geared to the winning of power. That still has to be said to some people in our movement here in America, back in Britain and everywhere else. They are crusaders for the truth, but they don't relate it to the necessities of winning power. It cannot be said enough. Power is what must be won. First, just a little bit of power, then more power, and finally complete power. Activity geared to anything else is a waste of time.